What's going on everyone? Uh, so today I'm gonna check out this Top Test uh, combustible gas leak detector. Um, so this company reached out um, and I usually ignore those emails, but I was kind of looking into it and I was like, man, it's a really compact tester and it's a really cheap price, honestly, compared to other testers. So I was like, I'll give it a shot and see what, what uh, the, the deal is with it. So um, here it is. Um, I've got my general tools that I've been using that's about 10 times the cost. Uh, well, eh, maybe like seven times the cost of this one. Um, I got that going right now. It's calibrating. So I wanted to open this up here. Uh, looks like it comes with batteries. Duracell. That's nice. Um, so you can see the difference here in these two. Um, the general tools does have this big... Uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, like gyroscope. I don't know um, what the terminology for that is, but it does help in reaching into corners and stuff like that. I just calibrated. This one's a little bit smaller, so it might not be as easy to get into tight space. So like I said, this one comes with Duracell. It comes with a nice little pouch too. I guess you carry it in. Instructions, obviously. Packaging's pretty nice. Right, so I just put the two AAAs in and it is uh, calibrating as we speak. So we're going to give this a shot and see how it does. The one thing I do like about it is it's compact size, but that's also probably going to be its downfall because I could reach a lot different spots with this, tighter spaces. I could bend this, reach around corners and whatnot. Whereas this, it's just, I'm limited to the length of my arm essentially, which is not very long. So um, in terms of usability, I think the general tools is going to win on this one. Uh, but in terms of size and easy to carry, the top test definitely wins. All right, so I've got the top test uh, combustible gas detector here set right up next to the General Tools one. And uh, just as a quick comparison to see, you know, how each one reacts, um, I'm going to put them both in low sensitivity since this is just going to be pumping out a pretty decent amount of gas. Um, and then we're gonna, gonna just turn the gas on real quick, hopefully without igniting, and see how each of them picks it up. Okay, so the top test actually reacted first, and we're still not seeing anything from the general tools. Oh, here we go. starting to pick it up but it's not as heavy as the top test one and it just jumped back down so top test definitely reacted quicker um, and more severe than the general tools the general tools surprisingly barely picked anything up so we will turn them both on high sensitivity now and then see how they do. So that one's still sensing it. I could smell it in the air, um, but that one's still going. So definitely a lot more sensitive and that they're both on low. So we're gonna try them both on high on this next round. All right, so I, I moved them back a little bit and I set the sensitivity on both of them to high. So we're gonna try it now and see how it does. All right, so there goes the top test already. All right, and there goes the general tools. So top test definitely reacts quicker. They're both reacting at the same right now, same rate. So um, general tools, I think I feel like it should definitely just be set on sensitivity high at all times. Um, the uh, top tests seem to work both ways, and it was quicker both times. So definitely for 25 bucks, definitely beats this $180 one for sure as far as detecting quicker. All right, guys, so uh, I'm just going to do this in the back of my Jeep here. It's a little bit messy, so excuse that. But um, next comparison I'm going to do with these two um, is just how long it takes them to calibrate once you turn them on. They got to kind of go through a little process. So I'm going to try to turn them on both at the same time. So we could see how long it takes. 
for each one. And you can see that with the general tools, it kind of just cycles through like that. With the um, top tests, it just you know cycles up and down there. So we'll see which one calibrates first. All right, so the top test just finished. It's calibrated, ready to go, ready to be used. We're still waiting on the General Tools one. And the General Tools one is the NGD8800, for those of you curious. So the general tools is taking significantly longer to calibrate. Um, there it goes. Um, so overall, you know, I think the top test wins in a couple categories. That's speed to calibrate. So time it takes to calibrate. So that will save you time when you're uh, trying to get it to uh, turn on so that you can use it. Um, and then the top test wins in both low and high um, sensitivity testing um, in terms of first to detect the combustible gas over the general tools um, where the top test loses i think is the um, length of the little uh, sniffer here um, the thing i like about this general tools one is its ability to bend um, you can turn this twist it reach up you know high places um, really get into different difficult spots and since it's you know at least a foot and a half long <clears throat> um, it gives you a better reach whereas this it doesn't the sniffer the, uh, here it doesn't bend at all um, and you have no reach basically just the reach of the length of your arm like i mentioned before which my arms are short so it's not very long um, that is where this one kind of falls short but it wins in categories of sensitivity which is really what you want because you want to be able to detect those um, combustible gas leaks um, and that's where this one fell short granted this one is a little bit older than this one um, but also um, where I think where the general tools wins again is just a case it's got a nice carrying case and it comes with a little um, container here to help calibrate it you know once a year is what it needs whereas the top test just has a little carrying sack and you know I didn't look at the instructions here but I didn't see a way to calibrate it um, so I don't know if it's just, you know, once it's calibrated, it's done. I, you know, I highly, highly doubt that. But um, that's where this one kind of fell short and the general tools took over. But overall, um, if I was presented with both of these at the price point um, and everything, the ability and quickness for this to turn on and to, to detect gas, um, I would go with the top test, honestly. And I'm not just saying that because they sent me two of these for free. Um, I'm saying that as an honest comparison between the two, um, this one just does a better job. Though, um, I would keep this one for its ability to reach. Um, and it still does the job, and it didn't fall too short on high sensitivity. It was just a little bit behind. Um, so I'd probably only ever use this in high sensitivity and in areas where I need it to get into some tight spots. Otherwise, I would be using this every time for sure. Um, and since top test sent me two of these for free, I'm going to give this one away. So comment below what you do for a living and what you would use this for. And I'm going to pick, you know, the best comment, I guess, the, or whichever comment I like the most. And I will send you this one, um, no charge, um, just as a giveaway. So, um, I'm going to leave links to the top test detector, the, the one that I have. They have a couple of them. This is the P210, which is the higher end one. Um, so I'll leave links to this. You can get them on Amazon. Um, that way, if you guys are watching and you want to get one, you can. Um, the price point, I think, is great for its ability to keep up with this one, which is about five times the amount price-wise. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and if you're looking for a combustible gas detector at a good cost, um, I would definitely choose this top test one 
Um, and you know, it's funny cause I'd never heard of them before they reached out to me, but now it's definitely going to be something I recommend to everybody. So thanks for watching guys. And we'll catch you on the next one.